Good morning and welcome to the regular meeting of City Council on Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. Would the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin? Here. Mr. Coghill? Ms. Gross? Mr. Mosley? Here. Mrs. Kale Smith? Mrs. Strasberger? Mrs. Warwick? Here. Mrs. Strasberger? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mr. Lavelle, President? Here. Six members present. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance if you are able and remain standing for a moment of silence. And Councilman Strasberger, I know you want to acknowledge someone. If I remember correctly. Yes, thank you. I'd like to acknowledge um, former Alderdice uh, longtime football coach Jerry Hazlitt. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States, States of America, of America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Our next order of business is to amend the agenda. Is there a motion to amend? So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Our agenda is amended. Next up is presentations. We'll begin with Councilman Mosley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, can the, the good folks from the Garfield Gators come up? How you doing, Coach Bob? Yeah, come all the way up. Come all the way up. <laughs> you can come up. Come on up. All right, all right, okay. You're secure in the perimeter. <laughs> um, you know, it's, tr it's truly an honor uh, to present th this proclamation. Um, you know, a couple weeks, I've gotten to know Coach Bob. Um, over the last year and a half and um, you know I had the opportunity to spend some time with them at their 30th anniversary gala which we'll acknowledging today and the one thing that really touched me was, was coach Bob talking about um, this organization being started in, in 1994 and that was the year I graduated from high school and you know that was at a time a really really tough time for the city you know as a teenager um, you know the gang violence was at a really uh, at an all-time high in 1993 and 1994 and you know so I just um, you know really wanted to do this to you know to acknowledge um, you know as, as young men the, the role that y'all played in trying to make the city safer and being able to continue your work over three decades I think it, it is quite a feat so I really commend you so it's really an honor to read this proclamation uh, whereas the Garfield Gators mission is to provide structured programming and to develop positive relationships with the youth living in Garfield and the surrounding neighborhoods through athletics, mentoring, and advocacy. And whereas the Garfield Youth Sports Program was founded in 1993 by Frank Chapman, Bob Jones, Garth Taylor, Tone Walls, Chris Woodward, Woodard, and with technical support from the Bloomfield Garfield Corporation. And whereas for the past 30 years, the program has had a tradition of presenting a successful and winning youth sports program for over 5,000 children ranging in ages from five to 14 and, whereas the Garfield Gators held their 30th anniversary gala on Saturday, July 13th, 2024 at Rodef Shalom Temple. And now therefore be it resolved that the council of the city of Pittsburgh does hereby recognize and congratulate the Garfield Gators on their 30th anniversary and be it further resolved mm -hmm. that the council of the city of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Tuesday, July 30th, 2024 to be Garfield Gators Day in the city of Pittsburgh. We have a motion to approve. So move. So move. All those in favor? Aye. Congratulations. Okay, I guess we got to do the. 
I'll, we I'll we just did it. We did it while you're okay. clapping. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, first, uh, Councilman Mosley, I want to thank you for, for recognizing us and everyone in council. Um, the 30 years went by really fast. They've been enjoyable. They've been um, years that bring the community together and definitely connected all the men that you see here. Some of us are older. You see our, our young contingency that's stepping up and now, you know, taking the reins. And, and we're hoping that they continue the program on for another 30 years. Um, obviously, I wasn't prepared for this, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful to have an opportunity to present to you guys, especially um, in today's um, current just culture. You know, this, this youth football program was truly founded by community guys, right? Men in the community, we grew up in the community, and it's been community driven. You know, and I'll say 20 years ago, our current mayor, he said to me, he said, Bob, there's no place for government in youth football. And I stand by that today. There's no place for government in youth football. You know, I do thank you guys for helping us out in the ways that you do. Um, but I really believe, you know, it, it's, this, this is something that needs to stay in the hands of community. And I'm sure some of you guys know I've been asking for a sit down to have this kind of conversation. And I'm hoping after your recess, we can do that. Because again, it's community driven. And you know, you guys are serving the community as we do, right? And we wanna to continue to do that. And we don't wanna to have to answer to all of the rules and regulations and policies that you know, comes with government. So the authenticity of, of this youth football program, especially this one in particular, has come from community and we wanna see it that way. We're open to working with any group. We're open to working with any government entity or, or persons, but this has to remain community driven and owned by the community. So I wanna thank you guys and thank you again, Councilman Mosley. Congratulations. Um, I can my colleagues come up uh, for a photo with the Garfield Gators? All right, Brother Mel, you lost your time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now, um, can the Satovsky family, friends, and supporters come up? <laughs> as well as uh, Councilwoman Warwick. I want to uh, thank uh, the Satoski family and, and their friends um, and supporters for coming up. Um, you know, this is a really tough uh, proclamation to do, but very necessary. It's, it's, it's for a young man that we lost um, late last year that I had the privilege to coach, um, not only um, as a coach for Squirrel Hill Baseball, but also uh, for the travel team that I started uh, back in, in 2019. And, um, you, know, um, you know, really, really, touched a lot of people um, in, 
not only in the Squirrel Hill community, but, you know, throughout the greater Pittsburgh and, uh, you know, my son, uh, a kid named Jesse May and, 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 and the young man that um, we're going to celebrate in, in a minute or so won a lot of baseball games. And one of my uh, favorite memories, I have a picture that I believe I shared, I shared with y'all. Uh, I think we were playing out in Penn Township. And it's a, a picture of Yitzi, of my son Thaddeus, and, and Jesse May. And it was the day they threw a combined no-hitter um, you know, at, at, at a tournament. And, and, and that trifecta really uh, transformed Squirrel Hole Baseball in so many ways, as, 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 as Randy knows. Um, so it, this is a bittersweet um, occasion today, but very necessary to remember um, someone who touched so many lives. Um, so whereas Yitzhi Satoski was a superstar baseball player who played for seven years for the Squirrel Hill Little League for two seasons, played on my Eastburg Avengers AAU baseball team, every team that Yitzhi played on achieved many victories. He was an amazing left-handed pitcher with a killer curveball and had proven to be a great teammate that his coaches and team could rely on. And whereas many people in the local baseball community loved watching Yitzi play, they often cheered as he struck out batter after batter. He played many positions as well. His specialty was picking off players who were trying to steal bases. And that alone made many games very exciting. He also could hit. One of my favorite memories is, is that home run he hit out at a Plum in that wood bat tournament. Whereas Yitzi was a talented bird watcher and often enjoyed long bird watching walks with his father and his binoculars. He was an incredible photographer taking pictures and videos with his digital camera and drone. A budding chef, avid reader, music enthusiast, and excelled at math, science, and Jewish studies. Yitzi will forever be in our hearts and we will remember him as an extraordinary boy who accomplished so much and was taken away from us way too soon. And whereas the Hillel Academy of Pittsburgh will hold the grand opening of the Yitzi Satovsky campus on September 1st, 2024, the dedication will include a parade in his honor starting at noon at the Satovsky family home. And now, therefore, let it be resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare September 1st, 2024 to be Yitzi Satovsky Day in the city of Pittsburgh. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations. Okay. Um, say a few words. Tissue. Yeah. We just mod for a picture after this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just say from from all our kids, UT was probably our most Pittsburgh kid. He was born in Houston, and. Uh, Spent most of his time here, and I would say that uh, baseball was uh, a very big part of his life. He had a lot of parts in him, but this is a lot of people here, Councilman Mosley and Randy and Kip and mm -hmm. everybody here. Spent a lot of time with him. Oh, it sounds so pathetic. Um, yeah, some of them got to spend more time with him than I did in the car. I mean, kids were driving to games, and Eric and Danny Shaw. And I just want to thank the city and Council Mosley for really providing mm -hmm. a, almost like a second family for seven years of baseball. And that's part of his legacy, and we appreciate it. Any else want to say a few words, Danny? First of all, I want to say this is a, um, a very special moment for uh, Councilman Kahari. Uh, one thing that was said at the funeral and, and during the time of, of mourning was that Yitzi was much more than just about baseball. And everyone who's here knows that his passing um, affected much more than just the Squirrel Hill community. There were so many families across the city, the greater uh, city of Pittsburgh, who recognized uh, Yitzi's ability to bridge gaps and his ability to become a teammate no matter who you were. And even his opponents uh, recognized his smile 
and his competitiveness, but with honor and with prestige. And the fact that we're standing here today in the council isn't, um, isn't by mistake. It's because Yitzi meant so much to so many people in so many different faiths and so many different backgrounds. And the fact that Councilman Kahari recognized that is a huge credit to him. And it's, it's an honor and that Yitzi's uh, memory and his, and his soul should just continue to strive in, uh, in heaven and we should only know good things. And the fact that September 1st is so special for Hill Academy, um, I encourage everyone to come out and, and witness this. It's gonna be a really special moment. Thank you. Thanks, Daddy. Anybody else wanna say a few words? I don't know if Kip or Randy or anybody else. All right, thanks so much. Could my colleagues come up and take a photo? Three to be read into the record. Councilman, Councilman Charlin and Mosley present. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby proclaim August 6th through August 11th, 2024, as Barrel and Flow Week in the City of Pittsburgh. And Councilman Lo Mosley presents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare August 3rd, 2024 to be George Westinghouse Class of 1964 Day in the City of Pittsburgh. And Councilwoman Smith presents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Sunday, August 4th, 2024 to be the Michael Wards Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Do we have a motion to approve all three? Proclamations? So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All proclamations have been approved. Our next order of business is public comment. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which may be for city council and profanity will not be permitted. After your call, please restate your name, provide your neighborhood for the record. You'll be given three minutes to speak. Our first registered speaker, Dr. Ronald M. Miller. Belsuver and New Delhi, India, which I consider to be the world's greatest, uh, uh, the capital of the world's greatest democracy. Uh, Global Intelligence Society candidate for president 2024, globalintelligencesociety.org. A key to what I do is vote by voter verification for whom? A concern of council is U.S. American constitutional rights. Um, our vote, a key constitutional right, our vote is stuck in stone. Um, the unverified Pittsburgh mayor claimant, uh, Ed Ganey, uh, can drone kill uh, an individual city terrorist threat, yes? Unverified U.S. American, vote unverified, U.S. American president claimant, constitutional lawyer, Barack Obama, authorized the unprecedented in my view, anti-constitutional, trialless drone killing of black U.S. American citizen Anwar al-Awlaki. Uh, you say yes to black on black, black crime? That's what I consider that to be. The Pittsburgh City Council moneyed Kuyed 
African Hausa Black Political Empowerment Group, BPEG or BPEP, told black uh, voters, citizens, uh, vote for Barack Obama and Ed Ganey because B-O-N-E-G are black. BPEG, Obama, and Ganey are yes to New York State Attorney General Letitia James's Black Attorneys General for Harris Group, Baghag. Uh, you say yes to Baghag? I say no, it's anti-unity. If yes, you should say yes to a white attorneys general for Trump group, Wagtrug. Millions of uh, US Americans nationwide and thousands of us in Pittsburgh um, hate Nugumu, uh, Asian Nihongo, the DPRP racist political sewage that this represents. We want out, like Amandia Stenberg, Karalea uh, Restrepo, in the film Colombiana, Catalea inspires me. Uh, lawyer Willie Brown, mistress, and um, lawless Stormy Daniels, mister, do not inspire me or millions of us. This is sexist DPRP sleaze. Parents killed in front of her, Catalea wants out of the death house and fashions a fantastic escape. We the people in Pittsburgh and across the United States, we want out, we want a house of life. Uh, based on uh, the best information and intelligence we can get. I want the city and country RPDP house of death destroyed. Not the people, but the framework. People are fine. That's not the problem. It is the framework. We want something that is pacific and not violent. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joanna Demi. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Good to see you twice in a week. Um, I'm just here because I, well, I'm the food direct, executive director of the Pittsburgh Food Policy Council. I'm a resident of Perry Hilltop on the north side. Um, I want to thank you in advance for uh, moving the contract forward and approving it today, hopefully with New Sun Rising, um, to administer the first chunk of the Food Justice Fund. There are many people who have been waiting to apply for these much needed funds. They, um, the more quickly we can move forward, the better. There's a reason it's called the Food Justice Fund. Just thought it'd be good to remind us all kind of why we're here, why we're doing this. The Feed Pittsburgh report showed that while 12% of Pittsburghers live in healthy food priority areas, one in three black residents live in healthy food priority areas. That's compared to 5% of white residents. Um, another term for healthy food priority area is a community impacted by food apartheid highlighting this isn't an accident, it's not natural, it's a result of disinvestment in our city. I live on the north side, I see it. Uh, we continue to, to suffer from this, um, not only in our blighted housing, but also in the lack of places to buy healthy, affordable food. Um, the fund, fund is also called the Justice Fund because um, it highlights the need for food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is a new term for me when I came in this work, but it's about being able to control where you get your food, where you grow your food, where you produce your food, and where you buy your food. And the benefits are not only for your health, but also they can be financially um, a gain and also providing dignity to people. Um, and now that um, the COVID-19 support has gone away at the federal level, this is you know the last of some of that at the local level. Um, we've seen food prices go up highest in Pennsylvania, um, of other states in the country, 8.2% last year, um, according to the um, WVA news. So it's, it's really a, a tough out there. And while we can want to continue to fight for these federal and state funds, they're critical. This isn't going to solve all things. It is a local solution. And we can show what can be done when we invest locally in our housing, I'm sorry, housing, see, in our food, <laughs> in our food market. Um, so we thank you um, and also we want to look at how we can use this fund to leverage additional support from private sources um, as well. So yeah, let's move this from a theory to an action. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next registered speaker is Pastor Lutul Love Sr. Present. I do not see him online. Therefore, our next speaker is Ralph Williams. I'm just telling you what I know. He 
Yeah, okay, hello everybody and uh, thank you uh, President Lavelle and the members of council. This is about the fifth time I've spoken about this and now it's become a fruition because nobody in this council bothered to do anything about it. PCTV. PCTV is shutting down the end of August. And you know what? PCTV is a valuable tool, a very valuable tool, okay, to this to the community of, of Pittsburgh and Allegheny County because it has programs for youth to understand media. It did a lot, a lot of TV broadcasting. City Council, before you got your TV station here, used PCTV. This is the fifth time I've had to come on here and talk about PCTV. And what has been done? Nothing. So now, at the end of August, PCTV is shutting down. All right? I'm asking City Council for, a, for this fifth time here to please step up and save PCTV. All right? They're closing at the end of August. John Patterson, the director, needs to be removed. They need to, you need to restructure this TV station and get it back to where it was at. I myself put shows on there. I have friends that put shows on there. We rely on PCTV to put our TV shows on and nobody does anything about it on this council. Bobby Wilson, this is on the north side. How come you're not involved in this? Okay, and please folks, don't tell me you didn't, you didn't, you don't know what's going on. I've been, this is the fifth time I've spoken about this on here, and now I'm angry because my TV shows are not going to be aired now because of, because they're shut down the end of August. Okay, please do something about this TV station, and please keep it going for the sake of the youth, for the sake of the city, and for the sake of people who want to put TV on, on PC TV. It's a valuable tool to the society of the of Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. Thank you. Thank you very much. That exhausts our list of registered speakers. If there's anyone in chambers wishing to speak, please come forward at this time, provide your name, neighborhood. For the record, you'll be given three minutes to speak. Anyone in chambers? Seeing none, we'll move on to the presentation of papers. This morning, we actually only have one bill being introduced, so I will go directly to Councilwoman Strasburger. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilperson Erica Strasburger presents Bill 792, Ordinance Sum Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code, Title VI, Conduct, Article I, Regulated Rights and Actions by adding Chapter 625, entitled Automated Red Light Enforcement Systems. Thank you. That now moves us on to the reports of committee for final action, beginning with Councilwoman Strasburger. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilperson Erica Strasburger presents Bill 780, Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for July 24, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation, Bill 642. Resolution authorizing interdepartmental transfers in the amount of $1,479,512.47 from the Department of Human Resources and Civil Service to the Department of Public Safety Bureau of Administration, the Department of Public Works Bureau of Operations and Bureau of Facilities, and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. These budget neutral transfers are necessary to properly align funding associated with Pittsburgh Joint Collective Bargaining Committee contract ratification. Bill 643, resolution amending resolution 407 of 2024, which reappropriated Federal American Rescue Plan funding by updating the approved projects as outlined in Exhibit A, version 8.2. Bill 684, Resolution amending Resolution 578 of 2021, which authorized an American Rescue Plan Act agreement or agreements with the Pittsburgh Parking Authority by adding Mellon Square storefront support as an additional authorized project at a cost not to exceed $1,536,398.11 for a total authorized spend not to exceed $1,616,398.11. Bill 686, 
Resolution further amending resolution number 647 of 2020, effective December 23rd, 2020, as amended entitled. Resolution adopting and approving the 2021 capital budget and the 2021 community development block grant program and the 2021 through 2026 capital improvement program by reducing facility improvements, recreation and senior centers by $500,000, reducing step repair and replacement by five hundred sixty thousand two hundred twenty five dollars and forty eight cents increasing street resurfacing by one hundred ten thousand three hundred fifty eight dollars and seventy one cents and by increasing facility improvements city facilities by two million one hundred thirty two thousand nine hundred four hundred ninety three dollars and ninety seven cents bill 687 Resolution further amending resolution number 886 of 2021, effective December 27, 2021, as amended entitled, Resolution adopting and approving the 2022 capital budget and the 2022 community development block grant program and the 2022 through 2027 capital improvement program by increasing facility improvements, recreation and senior centers by $1,629,476 reducing step repair and replacement by $1,400,000, increasing street resurfacing by $132,493.77, and decreasing facility improvements facility, city facilities by $361,969.77. Bill 688, resolution further amending resolution number 723 of 2022, Effective December 19th, 2022, as amended entitled. Resolution adopting and approving the 2023 capital budget, the 2023 community development program, and the 2023 to 2028 capital improvement program by reducing facility improvements city facilities by $1,770,524, increasing facility improvements recreation and senior centers by $370,524 increasing street resurfacing by $447,373, and increasing remediation of condemned buildings by, by $1,052,627. Bill 689, resolution further amending resolution number 857 of 2023, effective December 27, 2023, as amended entitled. Resolution adopting and approving the 2024 capital budget, the proposed 2024 community development program, and the 2024 through 2029 capital improvement program by reducing facility improvements, recreation, and senior centers by $1,992,879.64, increasing step repair and replacement by $1,960,225.48, and increasing street resurfacing by $32,654.16. Bill 727, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Grace Arborer in an amount not to exceed $3,075 over one year in full and final settlement of a claim for damage to her vehicle from an intersectional accident with a city police vehicle on May 19, 2023. Bill 728, Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Sherman Hobson and his attorney Villanova Law Offices PC for a single payment in 2024 in an amount not to exceed $75,000 in full and final settlement of litigation filed in the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas. Bill 729, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Duquesne Light Company in an amount not to exceed $3,097.83 over one year in full and final settlement of a claim for damage to light pole near 2420 Lindell Street from a city ES vehicle on August 18th, 2023. Bill 730, resolution authorizing the issuance of eight warrants in the total sum of $45,000. It is further understood and agreed that the payment schedule of the total settlement amount shall be as follows. $4,050 payable to Kelly Angel, $4,050 payable to Deron Lewis, $4,050 payable to Kelly Angel as guardian of Sade Cherie Angel, $4,050 payable to Kylie McNary Miners Master Trust, 
$4,050 payable to Kamaya McNary Miners Master Trust, $4,050 payable to India McNary Miners Master Trust, $4,050 payable to Catalea Angel Miners Master Trust, $16,650 payable to O'Brien Coleman and Wright LLC in full and final settlement of litigation filed in the United States District Court for the Western Pennsylvania Western District of Pennsylvania, payable over one year. Bill 731, resolution, further amending resolution number 886 of 2021, effective December 27, 2021, entitled, Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2022 Capital Budget and the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2022 through 2027 Capital Improvement Program by reducing Bridge Preservation and Restoration Fund by $120,000 and increasing 28th Street Bridge by $120,000. Bill 732, Resolution Amending Resolution 200 of 2024, which authorized the Mayor and the Director of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into an agreement or agreements with Pittsburgh Futures for professional services relating to leadership development training by increasing the authorized spend by $54,000 for a new total not to exceed cost of $261,336. Bill 733, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to enter into on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh, a lease agreement or agreements with Risa Cafe to utilize a portion of the first floor of the City of Pittsburgh building located at 1555 Broadway Avenue, number 102, to operate a commercial coffee shop at no cost to the city. Bill 767, resolution authorizing the mayor's office to enter into an agreement or agreements with Catapult Greater Pittsburgh for services relating to delivering comprehensive financial counseling services to the City of Pittsburgh residents for a sum not to exceed $226,598. Bill 768, resolution authorizing 36 open-end professional service services agreements with multiple vendors to provide professional services on an on-call basis as required related to various professional services as needed by the various departments of the City of Pittsburgh, each agreement being at an amount not to exceed $1,500,000 annually for a three-year term and providing for funding of the cost thereof. And Bill 769, resolution authorizing 36 open-end professional services agreements with multiple vendors to provide professional services on an on-call basis as required related to various professional services as needed by the various departments of the City of Pittsburgh, each agreement being at an amount not to exceed $750,000 annually for a three-year term and providing for funding of the costs thereof. You have heard the reading and the title of the bills. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the bill is now... Oh, sorry, Councilman just, just real briefly, uh, I, I had some concerns about these bills uh, when at, at the table last week, um, and I want to thank Chief Cornell for taking the time to walk me through um, some of the reallocations and uh, communicate with me about what the, the plan was there. So just want to thank the administration for that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill, vote aye when her name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Would the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin. Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasburger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. The bills have received the legally required number of votes is passed finally. That takes us to Councilwoman Barbara Ward, presenting on the Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilwoman Barbara Warwick presents Bill 781, Report of the Committee on Public Works and Infrastructure for July 24, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation, Bill 679, Resolution providing for the issuance of a warrant in favor of the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation in the amount of $20,900.36 for work related to the Wenzel Carnahan reconstruction. Bill 734, 
Resolution amending Resolution 127 of 2023, which provided for a reimbursement agreement or agreements between the City of Pittsburgh and Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in connection with PennDOT's transportation alternatives set aside and the City's Safe Routes to School program for costs associated with the preliminary engineering and construction phases of the project, providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $345,000 an increase of $220,000 from the previously executed agreement for costs associated with the preliminary engineering and construction phases of the project, federally reimbursable at 100% and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $0. Bill 735. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to enter into an agreement or agreements with the Department of Community and Economic Development's Multimodal Transportation Fund for the purpose of receiving and spending grant funds in the amount of $735,026 to support the Critical Sidewalk Gap Program. Bill 736, resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to enter into an agreement or agreements with the Department of Community and Economic Development's Multimodal Transportation Fund for the purpose of receiving and spending grant funds in the amount of $74,147 to support the Second Avenue Connector Project. Bill 737, resolution providing for a supplemental agreement or agreements with SAI Con Consulting Engineers, Inc. for costs associated with the CBD Signals Phase 4 project providing for payment of the costs thereof not to exceed $575,887.64, an increase of $51,148.31 from the previously executed agreement as previously authorized by Resolution 395 of 2022. Bill 738, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Economic Development's Greenways, Trails, and Recreation Program for the Shenley Park Connector Project. The grant proposal includes an ask of $250,000 with a local match of $123,195.42 for a total project cost of $373,195.42 for this stated purpose. Bill 739, resolution amending resolution 559 of 2020, providing for a reimbursement agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the preliminary design, final design and right of way phases of the 28th Street Bridge project, providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $2,830,000, an increase of $1,610,000 from the previously executed agreement for costs associated with the preliminary engineering, final design, and right-of-way phases of the project, reimbursable at 95%, and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $5,500, an increase of $4,000 from the previously executed agreement. Bill 740, resolution providing for a reimbursement agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the preliminary design, final design, right-of-way, and partial construction phases of the Allegheny River Green Boulevard project, and providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $2,500,000 reimbursable at 80% and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs at a cost to the City of Pittsburgh not to exceed $30,000. Bill 741, resolution authorizing pursuant to Chapter 210 acceptance of gifts to City of the City Code, the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to accept a donation from Carnegie Mellon University in the amount of $47,300 to reimburse the city for paving and striping the parking lot on Moorwood Avenue near Fifth Avenue, and further amending resolution number 857 of 2023, effective December 27, 2023, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2024 Capital Budget, the proposed 2024 Community Development Program and the 2024 through 2029 Capital Improvement Program by increasing street resurfacing by $47,300. Bill 
Bill 743, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement with the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership for planting and maintenance obligations of facilities on Smithfield Street between Forbes Avenue and 6th Street. This resolution serves to authorize only the agreement or agreements at no cost to the city of Pittsburgh. Bill 744, ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title IV, Public Places and Property, Article I, Public Right of Way, Chapter 417, Pavement Protection, Section 417.08, Sidewalk and Curb Repair Program, to extend the pilot program by four months through the end of the 2024 construction season. Bill 745, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works and or the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement, agreements and or amendments with the Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania for the purpose of funding Southside Park projects administered by the Friends of Southside Park at no cost to the city. Bill 746, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works the Director of the Department of Finance and or the Director of the Department of Innovation and Performance to enter into an agreement, agreements and or amendments with Crown Castle for the purpose of cabling and fiber optics installation on city property at, an, at and or near Highland Park at no cost to the city. Bill 747. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement or agreements with the United States Forest Service for the purpose of receiving and spending grant funds from the Inflation Reduction Act in the amount of $1 million to support equitable street tree efforts in certain census tracts. Mm -hmm. Bill 771. Resolution authorizing the director of the Department of Finance and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into certain temporary construction easements on certain properties in the 8th and 10th wards of the city in order to advance the Penn Avenue reconstruction phase two project. Costs for these temporary construction easements shall not exceed $20,000 reimbursable at 80%. You have heard the reading and the title of the bills. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will by aye when their name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin. Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. Thank you. The bills have received a lead required number of votes. It is passed finally. That takes us to Councilperson Robert Charlin presenting on the Committee of Human Resources. Councilperson Robert Charlin presents Bill 782, Report of the Committee on Human Resources for July 24th, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill 714. Resolution amending Resolution 148 of 2023, authorizing the Mayor and the Commission on Human Relations to expand the agreement and agreements with Reuter Law for Legal Services related to the enforcement of City Code Chapter 659.03, Unlawful Housing Practices, by increasing the approved amount by $50,000 for an amended total cost not to exceed $175,000 over five years. You've heard the reading and title of the bill. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when her name is called. Those opposed will vote, will vote no. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. The bill has received a lead required number of votes. It's passed finally. That takes us to Councilman Bobby Wilson, presenting on the Committee of Land Use and Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.
Councilman Bobby Wilson presents Bill 783, Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for July 24th, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill 748, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into an agreement or agreements with agencies to provide supportive services related to the home ARP program for a total not to exceed $200,000. Bill 750, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of, Fi of City Planning to enter into an agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission for the purpose of receiving grant funds in the amount of $25,000 to develop revised historic guidelines in the Mexican War Streets Historic District. The grant requires a match from the City of Pittsburgh in, an, in the amount of $12,500 for this stated purpose for a total project cost of $37,500. Bill 777, resolution further amending resolution number 863 of 2018, effective January 1st, 2019, as amended entitled. Resolution adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 community development block grant program, approving the 2017 through 2022 capital improvement program by reducing, by reducing Birmingham Foundation by $13,000 and Sheridan United Methodist Church by $500 and increasing Elliott West End Athletic Association by $5,000 and the open door by $8,500 and authorized subsequent agreements. You've heard the reading and the of the bill. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when her name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Would a clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. The bill, having received the legally required numbers of votes, is passed finally. That takes us now to Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith, presenting on the Committee of Recreation, Youth, and Senior Services. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith presents Bill 784, Report of the Committee on Recreation, Youth, and Senior Services for July 24, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill 779, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter into an agreement or agreements with New Sun Rising for the management and disbursement of grassroots and small-scale investments for the City of Pittsburgh's Food Justice Fund for a sum not to exceed $1,650,000 through December 31st, 2026, and for the payment of the costs thereof. You have heard the reading in the title of the bill. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Smith. Thank you. I just want to thank um, everyone on council and the administration and everyone involved in this for working with us and um, understanding that we went, I wanted to hold for a week just to make sure that we put in that the controller could audit these funds and should audit these funds. Um, so I just want to make sure that um, everybody knows that we appreciate them. We want to make sure that these tax dollars are going to what they need to go to. And we can talk a lot about um, what they're supposed to do. But in my mind, I know food justice is a lot of things. But if you're a person who's sitting home and you're hungry or your family's hungry and you have kids that are starving, Food is the most important thing to those families. So I would like to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're yielding results for the families, the kind that they expect, not kinds just to sustain organizations. So I want to make sure that um, we're watching these dollars and watching this and, and making sure it's delivering what we need to have delivered to our families. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? If none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when her name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Would the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Mosley. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mrs. Warwick. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President. Aye. 
Eight ayes. The bills have received the legally required numbers of votes. It is passed finally. That takes us to Councilwoman Deborah Gross, presenting on the Committee of Innovation, Performance, Asset Management, and Technology. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilwoman Deborah L. Gross presents Bill 785, Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, Asset Management, and Technology for July 24, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation, Bill 715, Resolution Amending Resolution 187 of 2024, which provided for the extension of a professional services agreement or agreements with NCR Corporation to provide citywide credit, debit, and e-check payment services for the collection of various program and permitting fees for the City of Pittsburgh by extending the terms of the agreement for five additional years at no additional cost to the City and ratifying NCR Corporation's provision of citywide credit, debit, and e-check payment services during the year 2023. In Bill 716, Resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement or agreements and amendments thereto with FedTech LLC for an IT staffing and utilization study at a cost not to exceed $63,000 over one year. You've heard the reading in the title of the bill. Is there any discussion? If none, the bill is not ready for final action. All in favor of the pass of the bill will vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Would a clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. The bills have received a legally required number of votes. It is passed finally, and that takes us finally to Councilman Kahari Mosley, presenting on the Committee on Intergovernmental and Educational Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Kahari Mosley presents Bill 786, Report of the Committee on Intergovernmental and Educational Affairs for July 24, 2024, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill 717, Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Act 537 Plan Special Study for the 31st Ward Sanitary Sewer System at no cost to the City. Bill 718. Resolution further amending Resolution Number 863 of 2018, effective January 1, 2019, as amended, entitled Resolution adopting and approving the 2019 Capital Budget and the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2019 through 2024 Capital Improvement Program by reducing homeowner assistance by $915,347.64 increasing tenant assistance by $771,973.61, and by increasing Urban Redevelopment Authority personnel by $143,374.03. Bill 719, resolution amending resolution number 53 of 2021, which authorized the City of Pittsburgh to enter into a cooperation agreement or agreements with the Urban Redevelopment Authority for the performance of work related to the 2019 through 2020 Community Development Block Grant Program by realigning funding across three deliverables to fit programmatic needs at no additional cost to the City. Bill 720. Resolution providing for a reimbursement agreement or agreements with the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for costs associated with the Ruthven Street retaining wall project, where PWSA would be responsible for paying 100% of the actual expenses involved in certain work, providing for payment of the costs thereof, not to exceed $930,437, where PWSA would be responsible for paying 100% of the actual expenses involved in certain work to be described in the agreement at no cost to the City of Pittsburgh, and further amending resolution number 857 of 2023, effective December 27, 2023, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2024 Capital Budget, the proposed 2024 Community Development Program, and the 2024 through 2029 Community Improvement Program by increasing slope failure remediation 
by $930,437. Bill 721, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement, agreements, and or amendments with the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for the purpose of systemizing sewer stormwater separation and stormwater storage located in Brookline Memorial Park at no cost to the city. Bill 722, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement with Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for temporary right of entry and license at Moore Park for the purpose of stormwater improvements at no cost to the city. Bill 723, Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works and or the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement, agreements, and or amendments with the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for the purpose of replacing the sewer system at McGee Field in the city's Greenfield Park upon DPW Forestry D Division's review and permit issuance, if applicable, prior to commencing this project at no cost to the city. Bill 724. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement, agreements, and or amendments with Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for the purpose of maintaining stormwater management systems in Phillips Park at no cost to the city. Bill 725. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into an access agreement or agreements and amendments thereto with the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority at no cost to the city for access to certain wastewater lines owned by the city and leased to PWSA for a PGH lab demonstration project in which the city would run fiber optic sensor cabling manufactured by PGH lab participant company artificial intelligent monitored infrastructure by light sensors through certain wastewater lines. You've heard the reading and type of the bill. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor to pass the bill will vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Would the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Charlin? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Mosley? Aye. Mrs. Kell Smith? Aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mrs. Warwick? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Lavelle, President? Aye. Eight ayes. Thank you. The bill has received le legally required numbers of votes. It has passed finally. That takes us to motions and resolutions. Is there anything from members? Councilwoman Smith. Thank you. I just have to uh, read that there's a um, Council Bill 2024-0701 has been held for a public hearing on November 20th at 1.30 p.m. and the legislation is available for public inspection on the city clerk's, uh, in the city clerk's office and on the website, our website. Um, and aside from that, I just want to thank, I want to I want to wish Kim Clark well with her um, recovery and surgery, but I also want to thank the clerk's office. I, Ashley and Louise are like the dynamic duo. They step in all the time to do amazing things for us, and they do it really quietly, and I just want to thank you and acknowledge the work that they're doing, but the entire clerk's office, because when one person moves, everybody shifts and, and responsibilities are added. So I want to thank you all for, for the work that you're doing every day for us. Um, Aside from that, did you want to talk about the letter at all? You want to talk about the letter? I don't want to. St I, well, yeah. I, just, I want to talk about the letter Which, sorry, that we sent a letter out um, oh, okay. in you know, yeah, I was the, the city council. I'm going to let Councilwoman um, Warwick, since predominantly is her, in her district um, affected. I'm going to let her say something, but then I do want to add something to that. So, do you mind, Council President? Councilman Yeah, sure. I just wanted to thank all members and especially Councilman Strasberger for getting everyone organized. You know, it's hard to get, every, you know, things were moving very quickly yesterday and uh, just to get everyone on the same page is just greatly, greatly appreciated. And the mayor and controller Heitzler as well. So just wanted to thank everyone for that. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot uh, to the community. And uh, so just want to say thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Smith. Yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know, I was, 
I do feel sorry because I feel like there's so much going on. I just feel like what's happening in the world doesn't necessarily reflect Pittsburgh and what Pittsburgh is about. And I really think that there's a lot, oftentimes our Jewish community, our Middle Eastern community come together for so many different things and so many different events. And it's sad to me to watch the division, you know, that's happening, you know, around the world starting to affect Pittsburgh in such a negative way. Um, I think that, you know, I, everyone knows I'm Middle Eastern. And so I, you know, obviously have a lot of family and friends that I care very much about. I, I just, I, I hate seeing anyone hurt anywhere, no matter where they are. And so for me, I have a different vision and different or different view um, than a lot of other people. But I also want to make sure that people know that the Middle Eastern community is also um, concerned about everything that goes on. And we want to make sure that our Jewish friends are, feel safe in the city of Pittsburgh. There should never be a time anyone of any culture. So when we talk about hate and hate crimes in the Jewish community, I just want to say in general, we should have no tolerance or no patience for any type of hate and any type of hate crimes, any type of hate crimes in the city of Pittsburgh, period, no matter what they are, whether it's in our black communities, in our Middle Eastern communities, or Jewish communities, or any other you know community that we that struggles with this, this type of... Um, hatred. So I just want to make sure that I, I mentioned that. And I also want to say congratulations to Kylie and, um, from WESA. She's moving on and I just want to wish her well with whatever her next uh, coverage, which she's going to cover. Uh, her you. next assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Any other members? Councilman Mosley. Yeah, I just want to um, you know, echo the statement to uh, my colleagues, uh, Councilwoman Kel Smith and, and Councilwoman Warwick, and also thank um, Councilwoman Strasburger for hurting cats um, yesterday, you know, and getting the statement out, you know, this morning. Um, some of the our brothers and sisters from the Jewish community, you know, were here in chambers and they mentioned um, how important um, that statement was and how it's resonating um, throughout the Jewish community and, and how meaningful it was for us to, to make a, a united statement and, and to send a message that, you know, we can you know, civilly have dialogue and, 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 and talk about, you know, um, different opinions we have about, you know, what governments can do, but, you know, no group of people should be a proxy, you know, um, you know for a government. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really important for us to stand up, you know, you know, as a community and create spaces, you know, where we can have dialogue and talk about the agreements or disagreements that we have about what governments do um, but, you know, at, at no time, you know, people should be a proxy. We should never take out whatever uh, feelings one may have, you know, in a political debate or a debate about what governments do and take that out on people, particularly, you know, in houses of worship, you know, as well. So the, the more that we can stand together um, as a city, you know, to protect all, ho all houses of worship, but in this particular moment, you know, protect the Jewish community while also creating space you know, for us to have robust dialogue about what's happening in the world and how it's affecting us, I think is, is, the, is the right um, path to take. And, you know, and I'm proud to stand, um, you know, with this amazing body, you know, to put that statement on, as well as the mayor, you know, and the controller that joined us on that. So, you know, I thank, uh, you know, my members for taking leadership on that, allowing me to be a part of it. Thank you. Any other members? If not, we have one meeting announcement. Council's recess will begin tomorrow, Wednesday, July 31st, and will end Thursday, August 22nd. The first council meeting after the recess will be Friday, August 23rd at 10 a.m. To register to speak at this meeting, please fill out the sign-up form on the council meeting webpage or call the clerk's office at 412-255-2138. With that, we need a motion to excuse the absent member, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned.